Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Release candidate 0.14 RC3 is out this week with at last with one last new feature for 0.14, observers, an upgrade to WGPU 0.20, as well as assorted fixes from RC2. With the 0.14 release getting closer and closer, fewer major features are getting merged, but we still have some great functionality to talk about this week. And as always, you can keep up to date with the release using the 0.14 release milestone over on GitHub. Let's start off strong with observers. 10.839 Generalized ECS Reactivity with Observers introduces the idea of observers to Bevy. Fundamentally, from the PR, observers seem like an infrastructure-level improvement to the ECS implementation in Bevy. They are absolutely usable in application-level code, but personally, I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop and what gets built on top of them over the next few releases. The docs for the release candidate are available on docs.rs. Just remember to click this dropdown and select the version, and then you can see the observer docs. Observers can use systems with all the dependency injection you'd expect, as well as a new trigger type. Observers can be global or watch specific entities, so there's quite a bit of flexibility here. In the example in the docs, we can see the speak event being passed as a type argument to trigger, which is the first argument that is injected into observe. It is important that this trigger is the first element in this system, although I don't know if that will be true forever. We can then trigger that observer, in this case using world.trigger, and passing in the speak event. Again, it's worth taking a look at the docs. This is a big new feature. It's pretty foundational in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you use it. Moving on, the upcoming experimental meshlets feature in Bevy 0.14 is comparable to Unreal Engine's Nanite feature, in purpose anyway. The author of the feature in Bevy, JMS55, wrote an in-depth post titled Virtual Geometry in Bevy 0.14 which is an absolutely fantastic read for anybody interested in the functionality that meshlets are providing. The post is less how to use meshlets and more how meshlets is implemented inside of Bevy and includes numerous code examples and screenshots showing off different aspects of the functionality, both on the Rust side as well as the shader side. And 13.795 introduces a new example that shows off custom primitives and extrusions of those primitives. This is an interesting example because it shows off a lot of the primitive and meshing features that have developed over the last few months. This includes the bounded trait, the measured trait, the meshable trait, and the extrusion trait, which is altogether quite a bit of functionality. Continuing on that thread, 13.719 adds support for segments to the extrusion builder. You can see a demo of what this means in these wireframes right here. And of course, the documentation for the extrusion builder is available on docs.rs right now. On to stable interpolation. Freya recently gave a talk titled Lerp Smoothing is Broken, which then influenced an implementation of stable interpolation in 13741. The video in the pull request, as well as the documentation that was written, are both top-notch documentation resources for what's going on here. So I'll leave you with the short version of what stable interpolate is, which is a type with natural interpolation that provides strong subdivision guarantees. And in 12720, there was a new top-down 2D camera example that shows off how to use Lerp to make a camera follow a player's movement smoothly. The code for this one is pretty straightforward, but it does expose a function that is potentially easily missed. And of course, Alice's merge train is back this week with a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. The merge trains over the last week or so have been very release candidate focused, so expect to see things divvied up into the 0.14 milestone or the 0.15 milestone. And that brings us into the showcases. This is a demo of an in-progress wave function collapse implementation. Here you can see it generating a hexagonal grid. And if I skip forward a little bit, you can see it more filled out. The code for this one is available on GitHub and will eventually be part of a crate that is released. However, it hasn't been released yet, which is why we're seeing it in showcases this week. Next up, we've got a gray box level layout built using Bevy Mesh Terrain Editor. Future work on the gray boxing includes cleaning up some of these meshes. And my current understanding is that this is all object placement and not terrain building. Next up, we've got some custom audio debugging tooling built with eGUI. We've only got a screenshot for this one, but the left pane is a list of all sounds in the game, while the right pane is a place to change the level, replay a sound, and save the adjustments. The bottom pane has a list of the last 10 sounds to play, with the most recent over on the right. And I'm personally always excited to see more map generation and noise usage because I actually just like even just looking at these textures. This is noise generation with an interactive debug menu in preparation for a larger map generation. This next showcase looks like a really useful crate and it's navigation meshes 
with Polyanya, is how I believe you pronounce that. This demo is preparation work for a nav mesh pathfinding crate, which we expect to see sometime in the future. This first demo is spawning random obstacles made from extruded primitive shapes inside of Bevy. It's then updating the nav mesh several times per second and recomputing all paths at every update. And all of that is running at a smooth 120 frames per second. The second demo shows off many different agents operating at once. And while it starts off with a small amount of agents, it continues to grow and grow before later on reaching 30 and 40,000 plus. There's also a Wasm based demo that you can run in the browser and you can see me just clicking and dropping things in here and adjusting what it will look like. The code of course is on GitHub as is the pathfinding implementation. Both repos have additional links to references should you wanna understand what's happening here at a deeper level, which I always enjoy seeing because it's always nice to go on a deeper dive into papers and other implementations that have influenced the things that I really like to use. And from pathfinding, we'll move on to ray casting, which is used to power this 2D shader implementation. For each pixel, a ray is cast from the player to that pixel, and what it collides with is used to decide its colors. After the initial post, this did get some updates, as you can see here with the world inspector, and it's hooked into a little bit more of the ECS, which makes it a little bit easier to play around with. This next showcase is gonna be hard to read unless you're familiar with network traffic dissectors. This is a work in progress network traffic dissector for Netcode, Renet2, and Replicon built in Lua. A dissector itself is a Wireshark concept, which is a network protocol analyzer application. These dissectors can be shared more globally, and the goal is to open source this work in the future. Our next showcase shows off an implementation of GRASS inspired by the concepts in an Acerola video, How Are Games Rendering Fur? Check the Discord thread for more of the Bevy implementation and check out the Acerola video for some of the inspiration, which you can see here. Our next showcase is a map generator built from a Markov Jr. grammar. You can find more about Markov Jr. over on GitHub. While the goal for the Bevy implementation was to evoke walking through a big valley, the mesh generation and layout generation are separated and the layout and mesh generation as well as the Markov Jr. grammar are all covered in more depth in the Discord thread, including some code examples. I haven't had the time yet to get into Markov Jr. myself, but I think the results here speak for themselves. And it's always nice to celebrate people's first forays into Bevy and Rust. This person built a three body simulator as their first project. They intend to clean up the code a bit before sharing it. And you might remember this chalkboard demo from last week. This is a chalkboard application that uses the mouse speed to adjust the sound of chalk hitting the chalkboard. It uses Bevy's native audio implementation. And that's the biggest difference from it from last week. So if you're interested in Bevy's audio support, you can check out the code over on GitHub and see how they're using the mouse speed to impact the chalk sounds. And we're gonna end off with this LiDAR style effect that uses a custom render pipeline to render points and order independent transparency to compose them. This means no transparency sorting. In this case, this video is sped up 2X and the points are in a point cloud component, which also respects culling. Overall, this is a really enjoyable demo to see and might be useful in a future horror game, honestly. And that's it for the showcases. Let's check out the crate releases. As in the past, we are skipping any of the 0.14 release candidate releases, although many crates have been putting out 0.14 compatible either releases or PRs in their Git repos. First up, we've got Bevy Scriptum 0.5, which adds scripting language support to Bevy, including Rai and Lua. In this case, the 0.5 release brings the Lua support for the first time and introduces a new documentation book. Next up, we've got Bevy Mod Picking 0.19. Bevy Mod Picking adds picking to Bevy. If you wanna hover, drag, or click entities in your Bevy app, then you're looking at the right crate. There are ongoing efforts to upstream some of this functionality into Bevy itself. And the demo I'm playing you here is introduced for the first time in 0.19, which is the render to texture example. This shows how to render viewport textures that support picking, and the 0.19 release also relaxes the requirements for eGUI and Rapier allowing the use of a wider range of compatible crates. Bevy SVG processor is exactly what it says on the tin. It enables working with SVGs with the rendering simplicity and performance of raster images like PNG. In the demo, you can see the asset server loading in an SVG and rendering it as a texture in a sprite bundle. Hill Vacuum 0.2.5 was released, which is a 2D map editor inspired by the Trench Broom editor. This release adds new documentation as well as the ability to edit texture animations independently of selected brushes. And finally, we're taking a look at Glam, which had its 0.28 release. Glam is a foundational crate when it comes to the Bevy ecosystem. This is probably most visible in the VEC types Bevy consumes and re-exports like VEC3. 
Version 0.28 brings ARCH64 Neon Sim D support, as well as a couple smaller breaking changes. It's unfortunately too late for this Glam release to make it into Bevy 0.14, but the improvements should filter through the ecosystem in time for 0.15. And that's it for the crates this week. Let's get into the educational releases. Bevy Cheapbook got a number of different updates in various areas, including this pan orbit camera example, transform interpolation, internal parallelism, one-shot systems, and background computation. New updates for Bevy 0.14 are underway as well, so look forward to some of that with the new release. And finally, we've got using tracing to profile a Bevy project. This post covers Bevy's built-in capabilities around using tracing and outputting Chrome-compatible traces. It includes some screenshots as well as some suggestions for how to make the best use of it. And that's it for this week. As always, we have the full list of PRs that were merged this week, as well as those that were opened, as well as the issues that were open. So if you're looking to get involved at the current moment, you could try to help with migration guides and release notes in the Bevy website repo, reviewing any open PRs for the Bevy 0.14 milestone, or really taking a look at any issue or PR that's been opened. That's it for this week. I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week.